Good morning again. We are continuing with our daily Bible reading and short Bible study. My name is Keith Fosky. I'm the pastor of Sovereign Grace Family Church. I began this yesterday as a way to try to reach out to our congregation, family, and friends, anyone who'd like to do a daily devotional Bible study. This is in conjunction with a reading series that we began at the beginning of this year where I handed out a list of daily Bible readings and those daily Bible readings are um, they're, they're New Testament only and they are in chronological order, not Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, but in order that uh, we believe the books were written. Now we're using the Grace to You outline for that. Uh, I know there's some debate over when certain books were written. Uh, so we, we started out uh, at the beginning of the year with what we believe was the first book written in the New Testament. At this point, we're at the book of First Thessalonians. That's where we are now. Now, if you want a copy of this reading list, you can go to our website, sgfcjax.org, and you'll see under the posts our 2020 reading plan. Now, uh, there will also be a link in the description of this video below if you want to go find that reading. Today we are in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and uh, before we read I want to I want to make just a few mentions of a few things. One, I did this video yesterday, had somebody ask me why the headphones? Well, the reason why I'm wearing the headphones is because I'm in my wife's studio. This is where she teaches English as a second language to Chinese students and we set the studio up the studio up for her uh, earlier this year and it's been very helpful the sound is good in here but if I don't use the headphones it creates sort of an echo with my voice and I want the sound quality to be as good as it can so I know I look a little silly wearing these big headphones and eventually I may get a better microphone but for now uh, if you'll just bear with me this is the best way to do this to get the best sound quality. I um, want to remind you also that uh, I, I'm hoping that this will fall into conjunction with your own family worship. I did a sermon last Sunday on the subject of family worship, and really that's what this is about. If if I, I want, as the pastor of the church, I want to be a resource, uh, not only on Sunday mornings but all throughout the week, to be able to help you in your family worship. So what I'm basically doing is I'm I'm trying to show you how I would go through the text and pick out things to teach on and, and, and learn about uh, because I know that you as parents especially who are leading your children want to be able to do this and so I'm gonna show you something very quickly before I read um, I'm not reading from my Bible what I've done is I've taken the text that we're gonna be looking at today and, and I've printed it out with my computer now doing it that way um, allows for a couple of things. One, it allows me to blow it up real big so I can see it, but it also allows me to write on it. You'll notice that there's 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 writing on the page and, and that allows me to take notes and connect uh, things. I'm looking for the who's, you know, the nouns and the pronouns. I'm looking for the, the what's, the verbs, you know, what's happening, uh, you know, the action of the text. I'm looking for the why's and the how's and, you know, uh, the commands and the, the imperatives and the, and, um, um, and, and so that's that's what I'm doing. I'm making little notes. If I did this in my Bible, it, it would destroy my Bible because the pages are thinner. There's not much of a margin. And, and I know some of you have Bibles that you do write in, and that's fine. But I still, even if I had a Bible I wrote in, I wouldn't do it like this because this this to, this is just a to me it's it's just it's a worksheet to just work through the text, and I find it to be very helpful. So if you think that that would be helpful for you, you know, take and, and copy and paste the text from a, from a, a, a website, paste it into a Word file uh, or a Pages file if you have a Mac, and print it out and write it uh, or write on it and um, make yourself notes. And use this for your family study. Use this for your personal study. Make yourself a notebook and keep up with these. Sometimes I actually preach from pages like this. When I go and I preach at Set Free uh, on Thursdays, oftentimes all I have is a page that looks just like this. And uh, to anyone else, it looks like the, the just just scribbling. But to me, it makes sense because I've I've worked through the text mentally and I and I know what I'm looking at. And this Sunday, I'm going to actually preach a sermon on how to study the Bible for yourself. And so I'm going to go through a little bit more in depth as to how I go through this process. So without uh, any further delay, let's go looking at the text. We're going to, today we're in 1 Thessalonians 5. Yesterday I talked about what the book of 1 Thessalonians is about, who it was written to, and who the, uh, where you know, Thessalon Thessalonica is and those things. So if you're interested, you can go back to yesterday's video. All right. Beginning at verse 1, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, 
You have no need to have anything written to you, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying there is peace and security, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you are not in darkness, brothers, for that day to surprise you like a thief. For you are all children of light, children of the day. We are not of the night or of the darkness, so then let us not sleep as others do, but let us keep awake and be sober. For those who are asleep sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation. For God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, so that whether we are awake or asleep, we might live with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. Now, verse 12. We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you, and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all. See that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything. Hold fast what is good, abstain from every form of evil. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And that ends the book of First Corinthians, First uh, Thessalonians, as well as the chapter. Now, I don't want to try to give an exegesis of all of this uh, chapter. And certainly, as you are looking at this chapter, you may see some things that you want to go in and focus on. Uh, but I'm just going to give you a few thoughts as you're working your way through. Number one, uh, verses 1 through 11, we see the comparison that Paul is making between those who are in darkness and those who are in the light, those who are uh, facing the wrath of God when Jesus returns and those who are going to be destined to be saved. That's, that's the, the phrase he used. He says, God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. That, that's the blessing of being in Christ is that we do not have to fear Jesus' return. Uh, when he comes and when he splits the eastern sky, we don't have to be afraid. Um, we don't have to fear the coming of our Lord. We can, we can wait, with it, wait for it with, uh, with, with hope and expectancy and not with fear. But for those who are not in Christ, there should be great fear. Uh, and this is why the, the gospel is a command to, to turn from sin and turn to Christ. And that way you have no reason to fear death and you have no reason to fear the end when Christ will return. Now, there is something else to notice here in verses 1 to 11. Uh, it says in verse 8, We belong to the day, let us be sober, having put on the breastplate of faith and love and a helmet of the hope of salvation. Now, that's a comparative verse that we could look at if we had time over in Ephesians 6, where Paul talks about the armor of God. Now, in Ephesians 6, he gives a very explicit detail of the, the breastplate of righteousness and the belt of truth and the shoes of peace and uh, uh, the, 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 the helmet of salvation and the shield of faith and the sword of the spirit. And, and this is, it, he doesn't say the same thing here. What's interesting is he calls this the breastplate of faith and love rather than the breastplate of, breastplate of righteousness. And what, what we're seeing here is just that this is not a hard and fast analogy. The armor of God, you know, some people make a huge deal about the, the shield represents this and the, the breastplate represents this. And I, and I think those analogies can stand uh, well, but the, the point is, is it's not a hard and fast analogy. Ultimately, um, it, it, the, the, those things can be interchangeable and we can see uh, how faith and love can be our breastplate as well as righteousness. And, and so um, that, that's just a, a good way to compare uh, scripture with scripture, you can see Paul using this analogy in Ephesians 6 as well as, as here in, um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 
Now, uh, the, the, the verse that I really want to focus on, like I said, there's so much here. You could talk about how he's telling us to respect our leaders in uh, verse 12. And I do think that's the elders that he's referring to there because he talks about those who labor over you uh, in the Lord and admonish you. That, that, that's, that's not referring necessarily to the government, even though we are told to, to, uh, to be good citizens and to obey the ones who are put over us. This is talking about those who serve in the church, those who are laboring in the word of God. And Paul is saying, respect respect them and esteem them highly because of their work. Uh, that's something that all believers are called to do uh, is to um, appreciate those who labor in the word of God. But the, but the one section that I really wanted to focus on, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get through this quickly, is if you notice beginning in verse uh, 14, we see a what seems like a shotgun of, of several uh, little miniature admonitions, little 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 sort of mini exhortations, if you will, uh, and it starts with the phrase, "And we urge you." And he says, "Admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all, uh, see that no one pays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another." These are these are little miniature imperatives, and it's just boom, 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 rapid fire. And the one that I think we should focus on today, uh, because this is important for all of us, is in verse 18 when he says, give thanks in all circumstances. Now, in, uh, in the Greek, it actually says in ponte, which, uh, or, uh, which means in all, and then uh, euchariste, which, which uh, uh, is um, give thanks. So it, it literally says in all give thanks, and, uh, or in all thanksgiving. And that word Eucharist or Eucharistete, you've probably heard the phrase Eucharist before, you know, in, in, such as in Roman Catholicism, they refer to the, the, the participation in the Mass as the Eucharist. Well, well, Eucharist simply means thanksgiving or the giving of thanks. And, um, and uh, it, it's, this verse is telling us that no matter what the situation that we are in, we need to be able to in Christian maturity, understand that God is working in this situation and that God is to be thanked in the situation, even if it's in a difficult situation. And, and I'm reminded of Romans chapter 8, which tells us that um, God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him. Um, that means even the difficult things. That means even the hard things. That means even in the midst of a global health crisis, God is going to cause all things to work together for the good of those who love him. And so we ought to be able to give thanks in all circumstances, in all thanksgiving. And so... Um, I would like for you today to consider how can you give thanks to God today in your circumstance. I'll tell you right away, um, I'm thankful for the technology to be able to do this that I'm doing right now. And I'm thankful that many of you who are having to stay at home are able to still connect via technology and um, many of us even though we're in this time of sort of sequestering and social distancing many of us are comfortable in our homes with food and air conditioning and access to, to the internet and entertainment um, this is a this is certainly not anything like uh, you think of a hundred years ago in the time of the Spanish flu uh, there were times during that time churches were closed and, 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 and the pastors couldn't get the word out. They, they couldn't preach um, except for those who would leave their churches open, of course, and defy what was being asked of them. But, but ultimately, there was no kind of technology to reach people. And, and so we live, in a, we live in a time where there's, a, there's an amazing uh, uh, amount of ability for us to stay connected. And certainly that has created some issues too. And, and, and I know some of you may feel like the, that sometimes this ability to connect does more harm than good and and that's a conversation for another time but what i'm saying is if, if you're able to listen to this and you're able to be blessed by it and to if this is helpful to you then then 
I would just say, you know, giving thanks for technology and the ability uh, to do this, the ability to work from home. Some of you have jobs that have forced you to be home and, you know, be thankful that God has given you the ability to do that. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the next thing I would say I would want to be thankful for myself is I'm thankful for time with my family. Um, our kids are not going to remember this the same way we do. I read something this morning online that I thought was very helpful. It said, you know, our children are going to remember this differently because we're going to remember it as a time when there was a lack of toilet paper and there was a, a you know hoarding of, of of things at the grocery store and it was difficult to buy things but the kids are going to remember this as a time when they were with mom and dad more than they had been before they're going to remember this as a time when they when they were um doing crafts and playing games and going outside and 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 and, and sitting around the table and having a meal this this to them could be a real blessing if we treat it as such and uh, use the extra time that we have with them in a very positive way. Uh, I'm also thankful and I want to say I'm thankful today for the people who are working in the midst of all this to try to make things better. For my friends who are nurses and doctors and uh, nursing assistants, um, I know many of you are working extra hours and you're working in dangerous situations and uh, I just want to say I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for the effort that you put. I'm thankful for truck drivers because they're the ones who are keeping the store shelves uh, stocked as well as possible. And the ones who work at the stores, the people of Walmart, the people of, uh, of, of the different stores, Publix and, and Winn-Dixie and wherever you are, you know, maybe a Kroger or something, uh, that is a blessing that we have people who are continuing to work, people who are carrying mail, people who are working at gas stations. Um, I'm thankful for them. And so, you know, when Paul admonishes here, give thanks in all circumstances and all thanksgiving, then um, I pray that today that you would take a moment to be thankful for all that God has given you in the midst of this crisis. And even if things are bad, even if you're facing something really difficult, even if you're sick, um, even if you're hurting, even if you financially have lost, uh, I would encourage you that uh, the Bible tells us to give thanks in all things and that doesn't mean to give thanks only in the things that are good but as we are reminded in James that we ought to take joy even in our trials because our trials are what God uses to produce maturity and patience in our faith so I pray this has been an encouragement to you now I would also pray that as you look down toward the end of this chapter that you not practice verse 26 right now and uh, you'll, if you go through and read it, you'll see what I'm talking about. And hopefully you'll get a little smile out of that. I want to pray for everyone and then I'm going to close the webcast. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to look over your word. I pray that it's been helpful. I pray that we would all have the maturity of faith to be able to give thanks in all things. I thank you, God, for you are the God who creates all things. And you are the God who sustains all things by the word of your power. And you are the God who has decreed the end from the beginning. And therefore, we can trust that you're working all things together for your glory and our good. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Until we meet again, God bless you.